Hello YouTube viewers, welcome to my show Camera Tuesday. In today's episode, we're gonna take a look at what uh, some people have forgotten. It's Handicam. It's not dead yet. So let's dive right into it. Now, I want to simplify this idea. Why the hell you wanna buy a Handicam instead of interchangeable lens camera? Very simple. It's a very simple, elegant and compact. What does that mean? It's everything you need from a display, basically a monitor like this. It's all in one package because many of you know, even though more and more, uh, you know cameras are coming out which has flip out screen not every one of them have and many times you will end up in a scenario where you have to buy external monitor almost all camcorders come with the ability to have a flip out screen which turns uh, towards you so that's pretty awesome it's simple it's basically it's meant to do one thing and it does it well and elegant simply means when you are holding it you, uh, it's not like you are holding a gun it's it's very simple it's elegant like you can easily uh, you know do recording for hours so this is a very simple solution and it has been quite popular for a few decades. Now it has been, you know, phased out for, uh, you know, in favor of basically interchangeable lens camera and your mobile camera. But uh, I will, uh, I want you to understand why it's not a favorable comparison against these puppies. Basically DSLRs or interchangeable lens camera is basically if you actually seen any people who have bought, uh, you know, DSLR, they will realize it's not small. Even the small and light one like 4000D and D3500 uh, zero they are not small they may appear small in feature like uh, when you hold the body only oh it's light it's not that big the moment you put lens even kit lens you realize okay now okay this is very big this is very heavy undeniably it has a higher quality but that quality if comes at a cost that you can't actually you know lift it as in like you can't hold it on for two three hours and you are doing something that requires two three hours of recording uh, you're not gonna use your DSLR and cost now this aspect is a very very limiting aspect for many people it's like hand, handicaps of equivalent comparison as in like more or less not exactly the same point but more or less let's say one inch sensor versus micro fourth don't compare one inch sensor against full for uh, you know full frame cameras you can get a very good uh, cheap camcorders now when i mean cheap is comparatively do not think it is cheap it's just comparatively it will appear cheaper but when you compare the sizes of it, it's a day and night difference because even if a camcorder is that's like, you know, big camcorder, which has three CCD, one for red, one for green, one for blue, it's generally built in such a way that you can easily carry it. Now, if it's a big unit, it's meant to be carried on your shoulder. If it's a small unit, you can carry it like this. DSLRs are not meant for that. The biggest hurdle if you are making video only that these things are not very comfortable and this will affect you like let's say you are doing video not for a living reason you are doing it you know just just chilling out and you want to do it you will find it that you uh, you know choose your dslr less and less simply because it's just so damn heavy and cost wise like uh, you can start very small yeah okay i'm gonna buy this the moment you like people start compelling hey i don't think you're getting enough light shallow background fit because in dslr people expect that so now you buy the lens and sooner or later you realize you have spent so much money that uh, your DSLR is the cheap part and lenses have become the most expensive part. So cost wise this is a very uh, you know uh, investment type of scenario where you keep investing. It's not like you know okay I bought it I forgot it like you may buy a flash gun or things of that nature or a microphone but you have to do those things in this also. So this whole idea of like you know DSLR is suited for everything it's not true yet. So let's uh, understand this why i am saying this it's very simple uh, let's say you want to do a vlogging the best option people nowadays seem to think is action cam that is true absolutely since you don't have to worry too much about it getting you know dropped or you know slammed into however let's say you are not in that kind of violent place you are not in a water park or things of that nature but you still want to handhold DSLR simply works out. You can't handhold a DSLR single-handedly. It's very difficult. And even though you people who use this sort of stick, uh, you know, uh, GoPro and things of that nature, uh, sometimes full DSLR with a shotgun mic like this, you can only do that for a few minutes. And the best case scenario, you can do that for one hour, not three, four. So the idea that this is compact, that you can easily carry it like this, and you can simply rest it on your short self, it makes it easy. And it has a very, very high quality image stabilization. Now some of the Sony, even cheaper ones, nowadays come with a, what we call a gimbal stabilization. Basically the lens sensor and the whole assembly is independent in gimbling. So image stabilization on these puppies, like flat out, there is no comparison. Like even the best DSLR or best mirrorless 
it in body image stylization will not match this flat out don't even compare those things like uh, and the fact that you can easily hold it also gives it very uh, you know very secure uh, you know rigid feeling some of them ha even have what we call optical viewfinder no, not optical electrical viewfinder so you can you know uh, use it in broad daylight so all things combined that it is a very compact package that does the job the zoom factor is very crucial I many of you know only APS-C lens comes with a ludicrously wrong uh, zoom range if you want to buy a zoom lens for a full frame camera you will be lucky to get 5x or 10x these puppies starts at 20 and I'm talking optical zoom I'm not talking like you know fake uh, digital zoom optical zoom and then image stabilization is also flawless you have zoom and this for some reason still uh, you know voice my blood long recording time if you are doing interview if you are doing something that requires you to do very long uh, recordings flat out you will be frustrated with dslr because all dslrs and mirrorless except one gh5 uh, you know have flat out 30 minute recording now earlier i used to think that was uh, due to uh, you know file size limitation that used to be the case in the very old days where uh, fat file system was used so 4 gb file can be written in a memory card at the same time but now that has gone but still the um, basically you can still uh, find the 30 minute limit but then it turns out there is a law in European Union that if you want to sell things to them and if it records more than 30 minutes it's a video camera they will tax it a bit more now I, earlier I must have thought like you know those taxes must be very high but it's not because these uh, cameras are not that expensive heck many of them are uh, cheaper than the body of uh, you know interchangeable lens camera or uh, cheap DSLR so how the heck they can pay that tax and still be cheap so that tax is the biggest hurdle right now. Uh, if that tax is removed or uh, flat out companies start to pay for it, Panasonic did that. And uh, if let's say next uh, generation of Sony full frame does that, like they flat out pay the uh, tax that they have to pay for the video camera, they can easily kill this off. But as I talk to you right now, if you want a long recording time, these are the only option you can get. Or you can buy, you know, Red Epic and things of that. Although Red Epic only can record for a few minutes simply because the card does not, uh, you know, you can't hard swap cards. And uh, not to mention the card only has a 10, 20 minutes capacity. So, so if you want something that can allow you to record for, let's say, five, six hours or three, four hours, and you're like, okay, what the hell are you gonna do that, you know, uh, takes that long? Let's say you are making a build vlog. Many things take more than that to build. And you can have DSLR doing time lapse, or you can have these that give you a full video. In that scenario, you can talk to the camera and be ensured that it's a completed recording. And while editing, all you have to do is slice them and compress it. Rather than in like a DSLR where you have to have time lapse DSLR, then another DSLR, then another DSLR where you're doing other things these are cheap you can buy five six of them so they make very good uh, companion for build blocks the long recording and this all in one package simply you pull it out you start recording that's it like uh, sony mirrorless are notorious for how long it takes to boot them up and even my canon 800d does take some time it's, it's very quick but it does take some time these puppies are built for like you know instantaneous recording some pro and uh, handy comes which will be the topic of my next video pro handing up because even though these handicaps are dying out that's why it's a very good time right now you can go to a shop and they will sell you it on a very good discount um, they are thriving more than ever so this long recording time and the fact that this has better image stabilization than all things combined and this optical zoom range which you cannot expect in your mobile phone so all things combined all in one this is a very good solution for surprising a lot of people and uh, do not think like uh, you to start uh, in YouTube you need uh, you know very very big uh, DSLR system because you may buy a DSLR thinking okay it's just that DSLR cost but the moment you start buying lenses the moment you figure out a hey, uh, most DSLR does not support USB charging or an external power in I mean like they support it but you have to buy an adapter that allows you to connect it to other AC adapter that AC adapter also costs money and these puppies generally have a DC line in directly and sometimes even USB line in so all things combined you can easily Make them into a webcam compared to a, a DSLR. So all things considered, do not discount a handy cam. It can also make a very good, uh, uh, you know, tangent cam. Basically, Joe Scott does this where he has like one primary cam and then a second cam. These can make that also. So this was my presentation on handy cams. They are not dead yet. If uh, all companies start to, you know, directly pay for that tax, yeah, then they are dead. So this was my presentation. I hope you liked it or learned from it. In that case, please leave a like. If you didn't, don't worry about it. You can dislike it. I would urge you to leave a comment what you want to see in the next episode of the Camera Tuesday. And please subscribe, share it amongst your friends, hashtag S2T. And I hope you uh, liked it and thank you for watching.